Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Now, this is not going to be a long recording. I'm just going to talk personally about a discovery I've made about myself regarding anxiety. And it may or it may not be useful. However, I'm going to tell you about it anyway, and it might it might be worthwhile. And I have touched on both parts of this recording. It's two, there's two parts of it. And I've touched on both previously, but I don't think I've done them both at the same time. So the first thing I want to talk about is... The symptoms, or the cause and the symptoms, and then how I reduced the symptoms. Okay, so it's not going to be like a technique. I'm not going to, you know, go step by step. I'm not going to lead you through anything. I'm just going to tell you about it. But as I said, it's going to be a short recording. I'm not going to, well, I probably won't. I'm not. I'm not intending to talk for ages like I sometimes do. So before I proceed, I would like to say thank you to all of you for listening. This is one of my most popular podcasts that I do. The um, you know I also do deep sleep whisper uh, hypnosis. I've got a let me boy to sleep podcast and sleep hypnosis weekly, among others. Um, this is, you know, one of the most popular ones. So I want to thank everybody who listens for listening. And if you haven't already done so, maybe subscribe to this podcast. And you can also join me on Facebook and Twitter if you want to. You just go to my website. The links are there. They should be there. Yeah. I'm not always the quickest in cottoning on to something when it comes to myself. Now, I'm not saying this as a put down. Uh, generally, if I put myself down, I do it in a jokey way. And I'm not going to put myself down seriously because that's the opposite to what I'm uh, kind of telling other people or advise and recommend other people to do don't put yourself down so I can't, if I start doing it myself in a serious way then I'm kind of going against what I'm trying to pass on you know a bit of self-respect uh, so, you know self-esteem being kind to yourself you know that kind of stuff which is groovy it's really so important as well when I say I'm a bit slow on the uptake, I think it's blind spots. We've all got them, and I don't think there's any reason to apologise for having blind spots or for not seeing the blind spots because they're blind. They're blind spots. You don't. You can't see them. And it sometimes needs another person to point it out. But not everybody points... You know, when someone does point out a blind spot in another person, it's not always done in a subtle or kind or gentle way, which may have the adverse effect, you know. May the person might not even hear it or listen to it or think, well, stuff you... So I guess there's a bit of an art. I'm not sure if I've worked it out yet myself and how to point out someone else's blind spots. 
because I've seen it in action. I've seen other people conversing. People that are way more um, carefully spoken than myself. People that are way nicer than me, kinder, gentler, and still having an, like a, a negative reaction from the other person. So it's a difficult you know, kind of thing to do. Seeing our, or discovering our own blind spots is probably even harder. However, my, this is my opinion, is it's less painful when you discover them than if someone else points them out. It's almost, I find it's quite quite a nice revelation to discover something. So for example, if I've recently discovered that I've got a bit of a um, bald spot, I'm talking about blind spots, now we're going to baldness. The crown of my head, it says the back isn't the crown, top. It's, I'm going, I'm thinning on top. I knew that I was thinning a bit, but I didn't realise it was quite as... I mean, you know, it's really noticeable now. But only, not from the front, but if I put my head down and, you know, with the camera, I can see. And if someone else had said, oh, you're baldy, or, you know, you're going bald, you know, I probably wouldn't have enjoyed that experience. Not even in a humorous way. Probably, yeah, probably would have annoyed me a bit. Not that I'm that bothered about being bored. I've been shaving my head since 2002, on and off. You know, completely bored. So I'm used to being bored, but I don't look good bored. It's just... Uh, is something that I used to do. So with the blind spots, the reason I'm talking about blind spots, there is a reason. Although I think what I said there is, might be useful. Is to have your mind open for blind spots, just to sort of be open to see them or to discover them. And it almost feels like because if you have an attitude of non-aggression towards discovering blind spots, you... So if you're with someone and they know that you're reactive and they know that you're likely to react, or if you know someone and, let's say, they've got... I mean, it's, there's people walking around that have maybe quite bad body odour, but no one's ever told them I mean, it's a heck of a thing to tell someone. I've never told anyone. I, mean, I might be, I might be the person that has it. I, I don't think I am, but it's. I mean, we all smell if we don't wash. But the thing is, if that person's kind of a reactive person, then chances are no one's ever going to tell them unless it's in an argument or in order to hurt them. It's hard to, I've, as I said, I've yet to find a way of doing it nicely. You know, there's this person I worked with when I was much younger, and she had really, she was lovely. I really liked her. And, it's, you know, she'd just had really, really problems with body odour. And everyone was talking behind her back. And I actually really liked her. I mean, I was at an age where I'd make fun of everything. But I didn't want to make fun of her. And I, I felt it was really horrible that people were. And I said to some of the other girls that worked there, I said, why don't you tell her? Like, nicely, can't you just... I can't do it, I'm a, I'm a boy, I can't, 
I was 16 and 15 at the time. I said, it's going to come across as horrible from me. But can't you do it in a nice way? Because everyone is just talking about I'll be on the back. So I've been in those situations before. And there was another person in a job I had and everyone was complaining that he smelled. And in the end, the team leader took him into a room and told him that he had to, you know, and it was just, it was horrible. Like, just, how would he, he must have just felt awful to have a team leader, you know, do it. If he had a work colleague or someone that he knew tell him, it would have been horrible, but not as, you know, Anyway, that's, that's probably a whole new subject, whole, what new but different subject. So going back to blind spots for myself, I discovered a blind spot. I discovered something that was almost obvious, but I didn't realise it until the other day. I kind of had a few ideas, but I wasn't sure. Now... Basically, when something happens that I'm not prepared for, and it's a potentially stressful situation, or it's out of my control, or it causes worry for me, I start to get palpitations in my chest, I start to cough. And just my my anxiety goes up. But it doesn't feel like a panic attack. It doesn't feel anything like any other sort of feelings I've had before. Apart from recently. I mean, the last, I think it happened in January for the first time. And I actually called an ambulance the first time it happened. And then I was just, you know told by the paramedics nothing wrong with you they examined me and it was you know I thought okay what's this about then and I felt better once it examined me I actually felt better and I've talked about this in one of my previous recordings and it's happened a few times it doesn't happen very often but it's happened probably ten at least ten times Since then. And it's so subtle. That I couldn't kind of pinpoint why. I really did think. Well maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe there's. You know. There's there's nothing happening here. I can really. Nothing that seemed. Important. Nothing that seemed like it would be. Ready that it could kind of have an effect on me emotionally. Well, Sunday night, it's now Tuesday morning, Sunday night, evening, I found a little bird in the park. I was walking on Dre, bought, and it was injured. I think uh, it's a little baby bird. So I think it either fell out of the nest too early or something like that. It, could, it couldn't fly wasn't able to fly yet might have an injured wing I didn't know my x-ray vision wasn't working that night and I I brought it home put it into a box and my phone friend my phone my friend phoned me and I started out sort of saying uh, what, what should I do what should I do and she was giving me some advice and, and I I had to get some food as well because I was so hungry so I was eating some food the bird was in a box so I kind of just I did all I could put it on top of Andre's cage out of his way and then just eating some food and I had this palpitations and I was coughing and however strange it is like well it's obvious it's to do with stress but I didn't connect it with stress until Sunday night. It was a blind spot. 
It was obvious. I mean, it's so obvious. Yet, I was blind to it. Anyway. Knowing there was a blind spot wasn't enough for it to go away. So what I f it, it reduced a bit. It did reduce a bit when I thought, okay, have I done everything that I can do regarding this bird? But I was worried about it. The last bird that I, well, it's my friend rescued, brought it up here, and he organised for a rescue. It was a sea, seagull or, yeah, I think it was a seagull or a pigeon. Seagull, I think. And he organised for the rescue people to come and collect it and take it away. And because it had a broken wing or something. But by the time they got here, the pigeon, um, the bird was dead. I mean, literally, it was here for hours, fine. And, well, not fine probably, but, you know, it seemed okay. And then left it alone for half an hour and... You know, and it was in the cage, it was locked, you know, Andre couldn't get to it. I put him in the bedroom, I think. And uh, yeah, so I, I was kind of worried that that was going to happen again. So I didn't know what to do. But anyway, I was really, I could just feel the stress and the anxiety over it. But I didn't, I didn't associate it with those physical feelings before. Andre's just come out to say hello. And then I thought, what should I do? And it was time for me to make one of my Let Me Boy to Sleep recordings. Because that was the time of the day it was. And I thought, oh, I don't know what that's going to be like. I wasn't feeling in the great space, you know. So at the beginning of the recording, I thought, well, I'll give it a go. Not all my recordings get through to being actually uploaded. Sometimes I do a recording, and if I'm not in the right space, I'll just delete it. But I started that Let Me Boy to Sleep Sunday night saying how I was feeling, which I don't normally do because on those recordings, I do talk about my life, I do talk about what's going on, but I try and keep it kind of fairly light and it's about relaxing the other pe people listening Andre you can stop making loads of noise now if you don't mind thank you very much and anyway I thought oh, I'll just I'll give it a go see what happens I start off by saying about how I was feeling about how I'd noticed kind of I don't know if I use the word blind spot but I might have done and then I talked about the bird I talked about how I was feeling about the bird and not really sure what to do and all that stuff and did what I normally do I just chatted for about an hour hour and 20 minutes something like that and I could feel the anxiety and stress leave my body. The feeling of needing to cough, the palpitations in my chest, the worry, you know, all it just seemed to just disappear. And I don't make recordings for myself you know it's not it's not supposed to be self therapy for me it's not why I do them but on that occasion that's exactly what it became but I didn't spend the whole session talking about um, uh, negative things or anything like that I would just just you know still made it positive I still uh, spoke honestly as well.
and at the end of the recording I felt really well. So, I think the point or the, the message or whatever you want to call it for this recording is maybe try and keep your mind open for blind spots to chances that other people will tell you about them first of all is quite unlikely outside of an argument and secondly someone might in my experience that's just my experience I've noticed that I've got to be careful not to generalise this, but what I've experienced is people pointing out other people's blind spots. Not to help that other person, just because that behaviour is annoying them. And I'm not sure, I would don't think that's... Uh, necessary a legitimate reason to point out that stuff because we've all got loads of blind spots but we don't need to see all of them I mean maybe we will eventually but we don't and some of those blind spots it will be the other person's issue anyway so for example when I first this is back in about like last year or something. Someone said to me that I I sometimes whistle when I talk. I didn't know that. And I'm probably not gonna whistle while I do this recording because then because I want to and it's not gonna happen, but sometimes I kind of have a probably a little bit of a lisp bit of a speech impediment sometimes and I wasn't aware of that but someone pointed it out in a rude way uh, sent me a message and was rude about it and it was it wasn't a very enjoyable experience but the simple fact is this is how I talk And if I've got a speech, uh, a lisp, that's going to be more to do with my mouth, maybe my teeth, my gums, my my tongue, my jaw. You know, it's going to be, it might be something I can't do anything about because that's just how it is, you know. And... If it's annoying one person, I don't need to change, or you don't either, we don't need to change ourselves just to please one person. I guess if it's annoying every, every single person you meet, then maybe it's worth looking at it if, it, if it improves your life. So that's for the blind spots, you know, it's better to be open to find your own, especially when it comes to anxiety, stress, things that may be trigger, but you don't realise they're triggers. And something that I've come to realise is some of the triggers are really obvious but if you if you give yourself a hard time about them being really obvious you're basically being cruel to yourself yeah why why would you need to put yourself through that be gentle it's really important I know I say it over and over again be gentle to yourself I think that's that's the that's the way forward. Being 
gentle because then maybe other things, behaviours, other triggers maybe that are not within your awareness may become available to your awareness so you can see more of those blind spots so they're no longer blind and then you can kind of prepare for them or have have a way to cope or deal with them So that's all I say on blind spots. As far as the talking part goes, the talking, I'm not saying everyone should make a podcast episode. You know, I've been making podcasts since 2007, 2006, 2007. So it's, it's sort of what I do, but I can see the benefit of I would say it's the equivalent of maybe writing how you're feeling down on a piece of paper. Personally, I would say this is even more powerful if you can verbalise it. Knowing that no one else is ever going to listen, you can just delete it as soon as you're finished. And everybody's got a tape recording on a phone. In fact, you don't even need to record it. You can just speak out loud. Although I know that that would seem very strange for a lot of people. Uh, So maybe having a recorder and you can see that the red button's pressed and the button, the time's going past and it's being recorded. That would make more sense to a lot of people if you're talking into a you know something that's recording you as opposed to just talking to yourself although I do talk to myself but that's because Andre refuses to listen to me so that's something that you may want to try I know I've, I've mentioned this in the past but I don't think I've ever mentioned both of those together. So, I mean, those two things don't have to be connected. You know, you don't, in order for you to make a recording of yourself, it could be any feeling that you're having. But maybe try it. Get a little quiet space where there's no one around, no one's listening. Press record on your phone and just talk about how you're feeling and explain it in your own words, knowing that you're not going to be criticised, you're not going to be mocked, no one's going to laugh at you, no one's going to, it's no one else involved. You're not trying to please another person. You don't have to watch your words. You, if you want to swear, you can swear. You can say whatever you want. You can express yourself verbally in any manner that you choose. In any language that you choose. So, you know, you may be, for example, you may be French, but living in England and speak in English all the time you know, all day long with people and maybe you've got an English partner and, you know, so maybe a chance to just speak in your own language how you're feeling, expressing how you're feeling into this tape recorder. Well, it's a mobile phone or your tablet or your laptop or whatever it is. They've all got recorders on them these days. You may want to save the recording, you may want to listen back to the recording, or you may just want to delete it. But it's for your ears only. Which means you can say anything. And notice how you're feeling during the process. And 
if it if it's useful, it just gives you another another way to deal with things. And what I find is it's almost like plumbing. That sounds strange, but you're unblocking, unblocking something so everything flows much easier. Now, that's the end of this short recording that managed to still last half an hour. Thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself. Because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love.